there are a lot of things going on now. I think this is only the beginning. Fans are being more disconnected than ever before. They are losing patience. We have seen that with our little brothers that Blue Co is owning as well in Strasbourg where fans have been taking action there. They have sent in a couple of letters to the owners and uh, because they want to communicate, they want to know why what their plan is and uh, where the owners is gonna take Strasbourg and uh, they haven't got any answers from Todd Bowley, Bader Dead Bali, Clear Lake and now there are a Chelsea supporter group that have sent in a letter as well and uh, we can go into it uh, where Henry Winter saying that the Chelsea supporters trust wrote to Todd Bowley and Baghdad Dead Bali about Chelsea fans' concerns about ticket prices, uh, claiming a lack of engagement could lead to irre irreversible toxicity. There have been rumors going around that people have noticed that they might be hiring the ticket prices for 20%, which is absolutely uh, ridiculous. I think Spurs, they hired there with 6%, there were backlash there. In Manchester City, who are the best team in the world in the current moment, they want to hire their ticket price with 5%. There were backlash there as well. And if they're gonna hire the ticket price with 20%, I mean, fans are just gonna stop going to the game. We will see less people because fans. They, they can't afford it. They can barely afford the ticket prices that are there in the current moment. And we know they hide the prices throughout the whole club in terms of merchandise. When you're just going to buy food inside uh, the stadium. Every, every price has been uh, higher. We got a letter back from CEO Chris Jurasek who spoke about the necessity to increase revenue to put us on a pair with our rivals. Also supporter trust want more clarification and communication from the owners. They want to understand what's going on, where they're gonna take the club forward and if they don't taking actions and communicate with the fans, fans will take actions. They will take the matters in their own hands. There will be more toxicity uh, throughout the fan base and this uh, Chris Jurasek he only answers that they had to increase revenue to put us in pair with our rivals but he doesn't really speak about that we need to be on the same levels in terms of performances and results they only look at us as customers they're only looking at Chelsea as a product they have invested in and then gonna just profit from it's better that it comes rather late than never but i think this message should have been sent last season and they have actually hold on to this this message was actually sent in 8th of mars so it was two weeks ago but they have waited to to post this um, uh, up on social media continues further here um what the Chelsea supporter trust said in that letter, unless the situation improves, this seems likely to manifest itself in more targeted chanting, especially at televised games and quite possibly more organized, overt and impactful forms of protest by sections of the fan base. As I said, we heard them. Uh, some of the fan sections have been singing pretty nasty words towards uh, Todd Bowley, the other guys in Clear Lake that have been singing towards even Pochettino. Last game against Leicester, we know they booed off both Pochettino and Sterling. They have booed other players this season in terms of Mudrick, Marco Corella. Continue to say in this letter that uh, uh, Chelsea have become a laughing stock on and off the pitch since being bought by Bowley and Clearly Capital in 2022. have really become a laughing stock. Uh, we are sitting in mid table, below mid table. We finished 12th last season. We are in 11th place. Some people think that we have a chance of getting European football. You can't forget about it. Uh, it would be very difficult to get past Manchester City in the FA Cup semi final. And then we're probably going to face, if we go through, we're facing United in the final. Unless we're winning the FA Cup, we are not getting European football. And let's be honest, we were pretty lucky against Leicester. We have been lucky in terms of the teams and 
uh, that we have faced in both Carabao Cup and, Les uh, and the FA Cup. We have faced championship side and it was lucky that Leicester got a red card. Because otherwise it could have gone to extra time and penalties and we could have been... Uh, out of the FA Cup. So we have to look in context. Vince is saying I hope we don't carry this atmosphere. We are cooking into Stamford Bridge for the game against Burnley. Don't put your team under the bus to pass a message to the owners. It would be betrayal. We have good home fixtures coming up and the team is improving. We have a chance to climb up now. Don't waste it for the team. I don't know if this guy is getting paid or something, but this is actually shocking take. Now you're, of course, right to your own opinions, but it goes deeper than just a game versus Burnley. It goes so deeper now than just winning and losing. It has gone so far. The fans have had enough, and the only way they can uh, be heard is by making noise, as I said in yesterday's video. The atmosphere will be toxic if things are not changing drastically. If the owner is not changing project, if we're not seeing that we're buying more elite players in the market, if we're not seeing uh, a change of manager, if it somehow Pochettino turns around or win almost every single game. There is no trust that has built upon with most of these players, with the manager, with the owners, there are no trust at all you're gonna have to earn it in Chelsea Football Club and to say it would be betrayal to uh, put the team under the bus I mean we have some standards here the Chelsea fan base got standards and levels that we want to reach it's not our fault that the owners has gone with under 25 model and buying inexperienced players of course we will support the team as much as we can but we can't just let this pass away we need to be heard immediately and to be honest there will never be a perfect time there will never be a perfect time when you can uh, make your uh, voice heard if you have something to say you're just gonna say it immediately but that's my take on it and uh, that's my thought on Vince's take and the uh, Matt Law was uh, tweeting that there have been stickers around Stamford Bridge on uh, Todd Bowley, Feliciano, Beida de Bali, where it says Clown Lake and uh, Free Ping Circus or Free Ring Circus. Um, get them out. We want our Chelsea back. Uh, pretty hilarious picture. Whoever made that, what an absolute legend. <laughs> All sort of stickers being posted around Stanford Bridge now. I mean, it's crazy. And I, I just think the fans, they have just started. This is just the beginning. Let's get on to some more uh, slightly positive news. And it's around the two players that Chelsea have monitoring that they got on the radar. Uh, one of these guys I don't really understand, but the other guy I can understand to some extent. And it's a French left back from League One, uh, Bradley Loco, who plays for uh, Brest. Uh, I can't pronounce it. But they are actually having an incredible season in League One. They are at second place and Loco has been an outstanding player for them despite only being 21. Uh, so it says here... Well-respected journalist Simon Phillips has claimed this week that Chelsea are heavily interested in Loco and they have scouted him heavily throughout the season. It is understood that the 21-year-old has managed to impress and Chelsea's decision makers agree they'd like to bring him to the bridge this summer. In addition, Simon Phillips explains that the French youngster has now emerged as the top of the left back shortlist i can understand this he's having a very good season for brass being very impressed others team are monitoring loco and i'm gonna say the typical meaning that everyone says now but he is a young inexperienced lad we need more experience into the team but if if we have Shilwell, who is experienced or marco Crella staying and then we bringing in a younger left back to 
learn from them and come in and be a rotational option that we might have a future here, then I can accept that. But that's how we, that's how I think we should operate uh, in the most positions. Like we have an experience in Reese James and then we got a younger guy, Malagusto, coming up. Same as we had this season in terms of defenders, we're gonna experience Thiago Silva and then you may be having a Levi Colwell that can come in and play when he can play. Uh, but that we should have that in the midfield, I think we should have that in the attack, except Raheem Sterling. But we should get in another elite experienced winger and then Mudrik can rotate with him. An experienced striker that will rotate with and Nicholas Jackson as well, so he can uh, get the pressure off loader a bit and we're getting in someone that can also contribute with more goals. I got nothing against if we're signing young players, but then they also have an experienced player to rotate with. Uh, you need mix of both, you need both experience and youth. Just look at Real Madrid, how they are operating. Uh, I think that's a pretty good example, or Manchester City, Liverpool for that matter. But he looks like a more than fast paced fullback that can bomb up and down. I think he's looking very balanced. He's difficult to stop when he's running through that left channel. And uh, he has a, a close ball control, which makes it also difficult to intercept the ball from him. And I think he's if solid in the air when he's making tackles, interceptions. I mean, you see here he got 3.1 tackles per game and is averaging a 7.12 rating and has a pause success of 85% so the guy is flying in the moment in league one and the price could only be 8.6 million pound for him of course he will likely raise in the summer but that's what the price i found on transfer market last play we're going to look at is uh, a guy that is a defender for Nottingham Forest called Murillo. This is coming from Daily May. Chelsea and other Premier League teams are monitoring Nottingham Forest defender Murillo. The Brazilian has impressed since moving to the city ground from the Corinthians for 13 million pounds at the start of the season. However, Forest have been punished for breaking Premier League's profit and sustainability rules. And to prevent similar breaches from occurring in future, they may need to balance the books. It means that some of their priced assets may have to be offloaded in the summer. With Murillo a prime target due to the interest being shown in him. Now I'm gonna go be completely honest. I have never heard of this guy in my entire life. I don't know anything about him. I just made, made a spreadsheet here. You can see the stats he's uh, performing this season. This is from whosco.com. Got a 21 million uh, pound. Uh, it's not a release clause, but uh, he's valued around there. He's a left footed center back, 184. And he seems to be good defensively. 1.5 tackles per game, uh, putting up 5.8 clearances as well. Interceptions, aerials, but he's pretty short being a center back. And I thought Pochettino wanted tall center backs or tall players in his team because he's saying that we we need to be better in the air and he wants he says that we are averaging a very short team in the Premier League don't know anything about this guy he's only 21 I like though that we're looking at center backs that is left footed since Levi Cole will is it but will he accept being a rotational center back for you know, uh, Levi Colwell, I don't know. Uh, but I think Levi Colwell, Buddy Achille is enough. Uh, I don't think we need any more left foot center backs. We also got uh, uh, Fofana coming back from injury in the summer. We got the Sassi, we got Gilchrist coming up from the academy. Humphreys is out on loan. And if we are going to sign a center back, can we please look into some more experience instead that will be calm and composed in the back line? Or even if Pochettino stays here, ask what type of center back he wants. This is the problem I want to come to as well is the, the sporting directors and we only looking to buy younger players so the owners can sell later and make profit from them. We don't have any interest to back the manager in the market and giving the players he needs and that is a big issue. 
But I still think it was interesting to look at these players and see what they can offer. Unfortunate, I don't know too much about Murillo. So if you know anything, let me know in the comments down below. But I know a little bit about Loco. And I know he's been a standout player for Brest this season in League One. And if we're looking to offload Cucurella or Chilwell and we're getting like 40 million for, for, from them. Then signing this guy for a very cheap fee. Could be optimal. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below as usual. And if you're brand new here, make sure you like this video, subscribe to my page, hit that notification bell down below. And thank you so much for watching. Take care, you guys.